Father, we do just give you praise for what you're doing in this hour, even among the children, Lord God. And we do just, Lord, it just overwhelms my heart just to see what's, what you're doing with them and how they're learning and being taught of the Lord. And Father, just as your word says that our, your, our sons and daughters will be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. And Father, just even... I guess this doesn't really go with the message, but just even in light of the baby dedication and the season and time that we are in with with the things coming into the world, that we pray for all the children, Lord God, that, that they will be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace, even in the midst of troubled times, that you would... You would, you would cocoon them in your presence and you would teach them at an early age to walk with you and talk with you and be led by you, Father. We just pray that you'll bring a real sharpness among the young ones, we ask in Jesus' name. And Father, we even pray that among us, the older ones, and we want to be taught of you as well. And we just thank you for for these teachings on covenant, Lord, that you truly are a covenant-making covenant keeping God not only did you make a covenant you cut it with the precious blood of Jesus you did the whole thing and you've invited us to come into it and partake of it Lord and not just not just lay it aside like it's nothing but it's something that we can pick up and we can run with it and Lord we pray that you even as we hear the word that you will stir these truths deep within our heart in a new way, Lord. We ask that you come and just stir us each, in each one listening within like we've not been stirred before with these messages on covenant, Lord. We pray that you would give us a deeper revelation of it, that you would take Ken aside and that your river would just flow in and through him, that even though he's made his plans, that you would just bypass everything and you would speak through him, not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, and that your word that goes forth will not come back void, but it will accomplish all that you send it to do. And Father, we would pray even through the proclamation of this, that these teachings will become bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. They will become such a part of us that we will meditate on it day and night until it becomes our very own in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen, amen. Wow, that was a really uh, special baby dedication. Brian, you have uh, taken baby dedications to a new level, I had to admit, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the sport coat you, you wore. I think that, that's got to be the reason. It's got to be the key to it. But no, it's really, really good. And uh, so anyway, we praise God for that. Um, what I'm going to do um, today, because I really feel like the Lord wants to do some ministry today. Uh, and so there's no way I'm going to get through this whole message uh, and then have pl- enough time for ministry. So uh, uh, Brian asked me to... Uh, preach for the next uh, three Sundays on healing and health. We, you know, um, you know, we talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago that I did a series, a two-week series on living by covenant and walking by covenant. And then I had said in that that we would also have three other little mini series: one on health and healing, and one on provision, and one on protection. And so, anyway, Brian wanted me to go ahead and do the one on health and healing. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, there are a lot of people who are really battling issues right now. It's amazing how much is going on in our fel- little fellowship about where there's a need for health and healing. And then I think also that Brian didn't want to preach for a while, so as well. <laughs> no, no, he's actually, he's he's doing a great job. He's right, I mean, how many of you are in the Forerunner School and been kind of listening to some of the end time teachings and everything? It's like... Uh, you know, you need uh, an engineering degree to understand Daniel's 70 weeks, but it's been, uh, it, it's been really, really powerful. Uh, and so he's, that, that takes a lot of time. He's still finishing up that, so he asked me to go ahead and teach uh, these, uh, these sessions. Uh, and so I'm going to start it. I, I don't want to rush through some of this because it lays a, a real biblical foundation for health and healing. Uh, so because I do really feel strongly the Lord wants to do some ministry in a couple of areas related to preparing us to trust the Lord and for health and healing. And so anyway, let me get, just get started with it. 
uh, and then we'll go to about noon or so in terms of the teaching, and then we'll do some uh, do uh, some ministry at, uh, because I really believe part of what God wants to do in this hour and part of what he wants to do with this whole covenant series is that he wants to uh, just bring some restoration in our faith level for us to, to, to for our faith to raise up. Uh, there's a scripture verse that, uh, uh, that the Lord uh, has really put on my heart and I've I shared it with Michael with some of the stuff he's going through as well, but I really think it's a word probably for all of our church in terms of where we are in a season right now. It's from Hosea chapter 6, verse 1, where it's, ri it's written this, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. And I think really we've been through, probably not just us, the church has been through a time where there has been a, a a breaking, a breaking and a brokenness where there's it's almost been like we have been, uh, we've been torn. Uh, but now we're entering into a new season. We're entering into a season where God wants to, where he's torn us. For, and it's been a good, I mean, there's been purpose in it. The purpose uh, has been uh, uh, that he's breaking away a lot of old and dead things in order to prepare us for what is coming in the in the in the hours ahead and the years ahead, and to be to help us to focus on Christ, help us to focus on being conformed into His image and uh, and intimacy and all the things that we've talked about. And there's been a breaking process that's necessary and that's gone through. Uh, but as we are uh, entering a new season, uh, I think what has happened in this old season is uh, our faith. Uh, for the goodness of God, our faith for the things of God's uh, covenant promises to us have been harmed a little bit, have been kind of uh, defeated a little bit, taken away a little bit. I don't, I don't know if anybody else is feeling that or not. If it, is anybody else feeling that? Or raise your hand if you're feeling anything like that. It's like, and, and so God is wanting, what I think God wants to do with this group of series is to build up our faith, build up our trust, Build up our understanding that God is good, that God is a good God and he wants good things for us. Uh, and that even the, the breaking and the difficult things that we've been through, even those are part of God's goodness because he's using those things to prepare us and to conform us into his image, to make us ready for the end times and for eternity. But he wants to release an anointing upon us uh, and I believe the church beyond us that God is good. God is good. And he wants good things for us. He wants to bless us. He wants to bring health and healing to us. He wants to provide for us. He wants to give us those things and, uh, that we want. Not to take us away from him, from focus on him, but he is a good God and he wants to do good things uh, in our lives. And so that's what I, uh, I think the overall theme of this is. The title of this uh, overall series is Le Learning to Live by Covenant. Uh, and the, the title of this next three week series is To Refresh Our Faith for Health and Healing. Uh, and in this message, and I'll probably have to touch on it some more uh, next week, we want to talk about five streams or five threads that show from the scripture, that show that God, God's will is for us to walk in health and healing uh, and that he wants to bring health and healing uh, into, into our lives. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that we don't use doctors. I mean, there are times when, uh, I mean, a lot of times when we use doctors, I believe that's a gift from God. But there are other times when he wants to heal totally apart uh, from that. Uh, in fact, I just want to even start out by just sharing a few, uh, a few testimonies just to kind of hopefully build up our faith a little bit that God is a healer. And even though maybe uh, we haven't seen many uh, actual healings, divine healings in the last uh, season of time, God is a healer. Um, I know that, I mean, a lot, a lot older than most of you guys, but in 1983, which is what close to 40 years ago, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, and when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, there was also uh, a, a move in the church uh, at that point in time where God was doing signs and wonders. He was doing healings. He was doing miracles. And uh, it was an exciting time uh, for me because God began uh, to use me some uh, in, in health and in healing, praying for the praying for the sick. Now, I have a point of where I'm heading with this, but uh, I mean, I remember we were in the Baptist church back then, and there are a lot of miracles that were taking place through uh, in the church that we were uh, a part of. I remember one, uh, I, I, it's been a long time, you know, it's been close to 40 years now, but uh, there was a lady, I think her name was Nancy. Um, anyway, she had terminal cancer, uh, and the uh, I remember being at the hospital. They, they were going in to do some exploratory surgery to see if they could help her with uh, uh, this cancer. And I was sitting in the waiting room with her husband. And the, the doctor come. I remember, I'll never forget this. The doctor comes out, and he had this shocked look on his face. And he said, well, we, we opened her up, but there was no cancer. Um, and so we had, when I say we, the church had been praying for her, uh, for her healing. And the doctor was surprised. And so anyway, she went home a little bit later. And she was healed of the cancer. Now, she, she had a lot of other health issues, and she eventually died. But it was not from cancer. And it was several years later, too. She lived several years later after that. Uh, so there was that. And then... In, in some of these I've shared in the book, Learning to Hear God's Voice, and you probably heard all my stories, but I remember when Michael was, I think he was six or seven years old, he was on playing a little league baseball team, uh, uh, t-ball or whatever, and there was a little boy on his team uh, that, I think he was in a, an accident of some sort, I forgot exactly what happened to him, but anyway, he was in the, he was in the hospital uh, in, a, in, in a coma, and I remember, it just like it was yesterday, I was driving down the interstate. We'd been praying for him, but driving down the interstate, and the Lord said to me, I heard his voice, and he said to me, go to the hospital and pray with them, with the parents. Um, so I did. I, I, I did it, and I, I, for somehow I knew where the room was or whatever. And I went, and we, laid, we prayed, laid hands on him and prayed. Uh, and he came out of the coma, uh, that that very day uh, and went home uh, th you know th and there were there were other times I remember even after we started the church there was uh, there were at the, and I've shared this a bunch of times too at the noonday association we were part of the Baptist Association we had one of these really boring meetings at the noonday association and so you know how in, in the Baptist church with the end you hold, you get in a circle and hold hands and pray uh, and we had a closing prayer. And as we had this closing prayer, uh, I had this um, pain, this sharp pain right down in here just for a minute. And so, you know, I mean, this was totally out of the realm of that group as to what they would believe. And uh, so, but I took a chance and I said, look, if somebody have something going on right in here or something like this. And this older lady, I mean, she's probably younger than I am now, but she was older at the time. <laughs> and she said, she started screaming. And she said, what? You know, and anyway, I didn't, nobody knew this, but she was getting ready to go for surgery the next day because she had a growth down in this area of her body. And so the whole group, we prayed for her. And then when she went and, and had the procedure, the doctor said it was gone. It was gone. And so, you know, there are a lot of stories like that where back in the 80s where God was heal healing. And uh, I mean, this one didn't include me, but it, it was uh, another one where at the, because a lot of you come out of the same, have come out of the same church of Noonday Baptist. And George Barnett, who was a pastor there, uh, he had a real uh, a belief in healing and everything. And there was a uh, a man who, a faithful member of the church, his son, who was, I'm not sure, 10 maybe or something at that time, uh, had liver cancer, was diagnosed with liver cancer, which was inoperable. 
And he prayed, his prayer was this. He prayed, Lord, either heal him or move the cancer where it can be done, surgery can be done. Uh, and God moved the, the cancer from his liver to his kidney. And they took his kidney out. And, you know, as far as I know, I, I'm pretty sure he's still living and doing well. Uh, and this is, what, 30, 40 years later. Uh, so God is a healer. Um, you know, not always. I, I'm going to share one more story. I, I, rem I don't remember the details about this, but I remember Robert and Judy and Donna and I went. There was some, Judy and Robert may remember it, but there was a lady somehow that was at a po her point of death and wanted us to come pray for her. And so we went over to her house and we went into the bedroom where she was and we prayed. And it was one of the of two or three times that I really felt or saw, not I just felt, saw the actual visible glory of the Lord in the room. Uh, it was kind of like a yellowy, you could feel it, but there was a yellowy cloud of glory there. And so we prayed for her healing and we were pretty sure, okay, God's going to heal this lady um, because of that. But even though the presence was so strong, he did not heal her, and, and she went on uh, to be with the Lord. So we don't always know. But the point here's the point I was trying to make here. There, there was a season where God was really moving and healing. And even after we started the church, and I won't take any time to share more stories, but there's some at the beginning days of the church too. But it was almost like, that God lifted all that. Part of it was our call uh, as a church, I think. Part of it was that. Uh, but part of it was that season was over with. Uh, and, and God, you know, was, that was not the thing he wanted to focus us focus on. Uh, but here's my feeling that going back to Hosea chapter 6, there's been a, 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 a breaking season, but I believe that we're entering in, the church is entering into a season where God wants to bring his healing power once again back into the church. Yeah. Now, I, I, when I get into the teaching, I'm going I'm to make sure we understand our focus is not on signs and wonders and healing. Uh, but I'll have to get to point four or five before I get to that, which will probably be next week. Uh, but our focus is on Christ. But even in, in the focus on the man Christ, God wants to bring, touch people's lives with health and healing. Uh, if you read through the book of Acts, you know, the message was Christ and him crucified. But there were massive signs and wonders that went on all throughout the book of Acts, not just in the early part of it, but even toward the end when Paul, you know, it, when Paul was on his journeys and going back, going towards Rome and all of that, he still did many, 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 many miracles. God did many miracles through him. And so what I believe God wants to do is he wants to restore our faith to trust him in this area. And I believe what's happened because of the tearing and the breaking in a lot of ways, we've lost that faith. We've lost that trust. He wants to reboot it or restore it uh, in this hour. Uh, and so what I want to do um, for about 15 minutes, I want to go as far as I can, um, talking about five streams where it's God's will for uh, us to walk in health and healing. Uh, you know, a lot of us have grown up with the, the message, uh, the, the approach to healing. Lord, if it be thy will, heal this person. It be thy will, heal. Well, I want to say it is God's will that we walk in health and healing. Now, he may not, uh, he may not always heal, but we'll all be healed when we get to heaven. So ultimately, we'll all be healed. But it is God's will that we walk in health and healing. And when we know that it's God's will, it changes the way we pray. It changes the way we believe. It makes us, when we know it's God's will for us to walk in health uh, and healing, then we, we pray, we believe, we trust from a different paradigm 
than if we not aren't sure. So that's what we want to start this series is talking about five streams uh, where it is God's will for people to walk in health uh, and healing. Uh, and we'll, we'll start out, uh, most of them start with the letter C. The first one uh, is covenant. And uh, we've talked a lot about that, so I'm not going to talk uh, too much about covenant. But we are in covenant with Christ, and as we talked about in this last series, through that God binds us together with him as one, where he has a call upon our life, he has a hold upon our life, where we are called to walk, take that walk into death, which we, we talked about uh, in the last series, where we, where we take the walk into death and say, I, I live for you. I die to my old way. I die to myself. I die to all these things, but I choose uh, to live for you, Lord. But he took the walk unto death on our behalf, too, when he went to the cross. He took the walk unto death, and he died that we might have a new life, that we might have life and have it in abundance. Uh, he took that walk unto death. And one of the steps of covenant making, not only the walk unto death, as we, and all this we talked about in the last series, was that there was a declaration of blessings and curses uh, in the ancient covenants. They would, walk, they would take the walk unto death. They would, both parties would stand between the pieces of the covenant and they would say, this is the terms of the covenant and I bless you with these things. They would call upon, in, in, in ancient covenants, they would call upon the deity there and they would say, I, bl I bless you with these things. But if you disobey, I curse you uh, with these curses. Of course, we know that Christ, he blessed us, but he took the curse. Uh, you know, Deuteronomy, let me read uh, this first. Deuteronomy 21, 22. Remember, this is the, the chat, book of Deuteronomy is the, is the book about the covenant promises and the blessings. And here's one of the curses, Deuteronomy 21, 22, and 23. If a man has committed a sin worthy of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his corpse shall not hang all night on the tree, but you shall surely bury him on the same day, for he who is hanged is accursed of God, so that you do not defile your land which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance. Uh, and so when Christ died on the cross, he fulfilled that. He became the curse so that we're heirs to the blessings of God but not subject to the curses uh, of God. Now, the curses of God include sickness and disease and, and things. Deuteronomy 28, you can look at it. But, God, but according to Galatians chapter 3, we've been redeemed from the curse of sin, death, and the law. So we're heir to the blessings of God but not heir uh, to the curses. And then as a part of that, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15 and 16, says this, The Lord will remove from you all sickness, and he will not put on you any of the harmful diseases of Egypt which you have known, but he will lay them on all who hate you. Uh, the point here is, that when we're walking in covenant with God, one of the blessings that God has declared over us is that he will remove from us disease and, and, and uh, issues of, of sickness and infirmity and that we shall walk in healing and health. Now, like I said, you know, it doesn't always happen, but it's a foundation that we need to live by. It's, a, it's, a, it's the basis for what we need to live by as we live in covenant. So the first thread... That, that says that God's will is for us to walk in healing, God's will is for us to walk in health, uh, is the fact that we're in a covenant relationship with God, and out of that covenant relationship with God, he says, I am your healer, uh, I, I will heal your diseases, and he's redeemed us from the curse of sickness, the curse of the law, which if you look at Deuteronomy 28, starting with about, Verse 15 or 16 is curses of tumors and boils and, uh, you know, just itches and all sorts of things. God has redeemed us from that curse of the law. Galatians 
chapter 3. So it's God's will. That's the first thread of thing that God's will, based on covenant, is that he wants us to walk in health and healing. Now, the second one, I'm going to try to do three of these, uh, and the two, two, the two I'll save till next week. The second one is his character, God's character. Uh, his covenant says that he, his will is to heal, but also his character says that it is his will uh, to heal. Uh, if you look at the character of God, the nature of God, uh, it's, it is for us to live in health and healing. Um, in, you know, in ancient times, the, someone's name represented more than just uh, a name. You know, we, we a lot of times name our children uh, just based on a name that we like, maybe a family name or something like that. But in biblical days, uh, the name represented the character of the person. Uh, and so <clears throat> you see that even uh, in covenant. You know, you see it in a marriage covenant. The wife takes on the name of the husband uh, as part of the covenant uh, relationship. Uh, you know, when Abram and Sarah uh, entered into the covenant with God. What did God do? Part of what he did, he, he changed Abram's name to Abraham. And he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. What did he put that breath of God, in, uh, that sound, that breath of God uh, into their name. And so it, it represented a change, not only a name change, but a, a change of, of character. Uh, and so there's a, there, here's a quote from, uh, the International Bible Encyclopedia, uh, it says, it says, while our modern names are almost exclusively uh, designatory, that's a hard word to say, and intended merely for identification, the biblical names uh, were also descriptive and often prophetic. Religious significance nearly, was all, nearly always was inherent in the name a parent relating his child to the deity or declaring uh, its consecration to the deity by joining the name of the deity with a service which, which the child would render or perhaps commemorating in the name the favor of God and a gracious gift uh, of the child. And so th the point is that God's name represents his nature. It represents his character. It represents uh, who he is and, and how he wants to relate to us. And of course, there are many compound names of God. There's, you know, there's uh, the, the ones Jehovah Dash, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah uh, Sid Canoe, Jehovah Makedis. There's, uh, there's a lot of names. But one of the names of God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. That's his name. Uh, and that's his character. That's his character. And he says this and we find this in Exodus 15, verses 26, verse 26. And God said, If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statues, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, am your healer. I, the Lord, am Jehovah Rapha, that compound name of God, I am the Lord, your healer. And so that's part of his character. Not only is it a covenant relationship, but it's also his character, is, is his nature is to be a healer uh, for us. Amen? Now I want to do one more. Uh, I want to, because uh, I want to say, there's, the, I, I'm going to talk about the cross, uh, and I want to talk about uh, for the purpose of the kingdom, but I'm going to wait to save those two to next week. The cross I want to really have enough time to really go into that, dig into that, because there is healing in the atonement of the cross. You can, I, I think you can demonstrate that clearly from the scriptures. You know, some say that there's no, healing is not part of the atonement. Uh, and I heard Jack Deere say this years and years ago, uh, okay, if it's not part of the atonement, where does it come from? Uh, it comes from the cross. And you can see it in the scriptures. Not that we're always healed. Uh, we are when we get to heaven, for sure. Uh, but the more we believe now in the cross providing healing, the more we'll walk in health and healing now uh, than we do. Because that's, what, that's the point of all this. The Lord wants us to learn to trust him 
in these things. Now, that doesn't mean we never use a doctor. Yes, we do. But we want to trust him for our health. We want to trust him in our healing. And we want to call on him when we have a need to be our healer. But we'll talk about that one next week. Now, the, the one I want to talk about today is because I, want, I really believe God wants to do some ministry uh, there. And that's the, uh, that's the area, the, the third uh, thread that we'll talk about today is compassion. Now, you know, we've got covenant, we've got character, and now this one is compassion. God is a compassionate God. God is a compassionate God. This is, this is where I want us to do some ministry in a minute. I think because God has torn us, Hosea 6, because he's torn us, we, ought, we think that God is not, we, and maybe subconsciously, but we think that God is not good. And I want to say to you that God is good. God is good. God is compassionate. He's, he is a compassionate God. Now that word compassion, this is a good definition of That word compassion is, give me your attention now. That word compassion is a, it, it, it's like God is moved, the meaning of that word, he's moved in his bowels or in his inward self. He's moved in that and out of, that, out of that burden or that heart or that inward desire where he feels the hurt, where he feels the issues that people are dealing with, it moves him to want to act on, the heart, on, on behalf of us when we're in that issue of need. Now, not, that's not always health and healing, but that's part of it. That's a big part of it in the scriptures. I'll show you in just a minute. Is that he was moved with compassion. He was moved with a, a, a feeling the hurt that people were feeling. Feeling the, the burden. And out of that, he was moved to want to touch them with healing. Now, let me just read some of the scripture verses. Got my whole message out of order here. I had all this really neat order here, but let's see, let's see. Here we go. Uh, Matthew 9, 35 through 37. Jesus was going through all the cities and the villages and teaching their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And he was healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And, and here's what you want, I want you to see. Seeing the people... He felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. He saw their need, and what was he doing? He was healing their diseases. Matthew 14, 14. When he, Jesus, went ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he felt compassion for them, and he healed their sick. Uh, Matthew 20, 29. And as they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him and two blind men sitting by the road, hearing that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd sternly told them to be quiet, but they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped and called them and said, what do you want me to do from you, for you? And they said to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. And he said in verse 34, moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and they followed him. So we see, okay, we see God is a God of compassion. Now we knew that. But compassion often causes God to want to move there and to heal. Share one more story. Uh, this was after we had started the church. In the early days of, of, of this church, there was a, a, a couple that uh, went to the church, and they were very integral parts of the church. But her, I think it was her aunt, uh, was in the hospital. She had congestive heart failure, and I think she had kidney problems. And 
Anyway, the, the two issues that she had were keeping her uh, from getting healed because they would treat one and it would cause the other one to get messed up and all that. And so, uh, anyway, she wanted us to go pray for her aunt. And so Donna and I were going and the thing that we probably had the least of at that moment was compassion to do it. You had compassion, okay. Donna is always better than me, she Okay, well, it came on me too, but okay, I'll, don't mess my story up here, okay? All right, okay. All right, so I did not have compassion. <laughs> It was pouring down rain. We were in East Cobb, and the hospital she was at was in West Cobb at Cobb General. And it was like, it seemed like it took like a, a traffic, and it looked like an hour to go. And ugh. the only reason I was going was because I knew I needed to because the, the, the lady wanted me to go pray for her aunt. And I was a pastor, you know, and I had to do it. So, <laughs> so anyway, we got there, and Donna had compassion already, but I did not. <laughs> but when we got in the room, the compassion of God hit me too. I, and so, you know, we're like in tears over, like, you know, this is like, had to be God. Uh, and so we just laid hands on her and prayed uh, and nothing happened. But then when we got home, the lady who went to the church, I'm trying not to mention names, um, she called us or told us somehow. She said, you know what my aunt said? It said, after y'all left, this man dressed in white uh, came into my room and touched me right here, and I was healed. And she went, I mean, she went home, I think the next day or that day, you know, healed. Uh, uh, but that showed me, as much as anything, how compassion uh, on us really causes God to use us in healing. But it, it has to be uh, supernatural. I mean, Donna may have it in herself, but I, I, you know, you know me, I don't have that much compassion, but uh, hopefully I do. But anyway, God, because he is a compassionate God, wants to heal you. And so we'll talk about some more next week. I've we got two more of these themes and I want to talk to about closing the door to the enemy and so and next week in this part two of this series. But what I want to do today, I want to pray. One, it, I really believe that God wants to minister to us today to break off a mindset where we think that God is not good. Now, you know, if anybody, if I were to ask anybody in this room, do you think God is good? You would say yes. Everybody here would say yes, I think God is good. But there's a difference between thinking it and deep in your heart where, you know, you may have been bruised and beaten down and torn. But God wants to restore that heart because that's the, that's the foundation for trusting him in faith is knowing that he's good, that he's a good God. And I really believe God wanted to, that's what the Lord's put on my heart for the last three or four days is that he really wants to minister that he is good. So what I want to do is this. I want to just um, stand up and I want you to stand up and I want to sing, um, but... I don't want anybody, I don't want the worship team to have to come up because I want, the, if, if they need the ministry, I want them to be the free. But I want, I want to sing that song, God is so good. Uh, and I know some of you know it, can sing just from where you are. And I bet everybody join in with singing that God is so good. And I, but if you, if that's you, if you're, if you have, because of, whatever the reason, maybe because of things that have gone on recently in your life where God has uh, seemed like he's lifted his hand off of you or whatever, uh, or maybe it's the way uh, you grew up. Uh, I want you to just come forward and uh, let, let's just allow the Holy Spirit to minister uh, to you, to break off that mindset, that 
in your heart that God is not good because he is good. So just come on to the, to the front. God is good. Uh, I'm going to turn my mic off here to sing so I can sing too. Judy, uh, uh, let's see. Shelly, Judy, y'all know that song, God is so good. Yeah.